Hi, my name is Brooke Thompson and I'm a second year student at Leeds Beckett University studying towards my business and management degree. This vlog will be analysing my behaviour as a customer and to help me do this I've included two of my recent purchases. What is marketing? So, defined by the Chartered Institute of Marketing, marketing is the process responsible for identifying, anticipating and satisfying a customer's requirements in a profitable way. Okay, so moving on, I'm going to go through the three different bias situations. So the first one would be routine problem solving. This refers to regular purchases that are very low risk and very impulsive. So for example, I could say a drink or a sandwich. The next one would be limited problem solving. Now this one is moderate risk, uh, less frequent than routine problem solving. Uh, so I could, for example, say an expensive foundation, something along those lines. The final one would be extended problem solving. Extended problem solving are very high risk, very infrequent, something you take great consideration into. So I would say a car or a house deposit, something along those lines, something just quite expensive. The first purchase I'll be talking about is my Huda Beauty eyeshadow palette. Now this falls under the category of limited problem solving because it is infrequent but moderate risk. And the theory I'll be using to apply to this is Ajahn's theory of planned behaviour. This theory is referring to the behaviour controlled by intentions which are influenced by three factors, so attitudes, subjective norms and perceived behavioural concerns. Okay, so there are five steps to the theory of planned behaviour. The first one would be attitude. So this refers to the positive or negative evaluation of behaviour that you are about to commit. So in my case, I felt positively about buying a Huda Beauty palette as I had smashed my old one by accident and I, I just needed a new one. The next step would be the subjective norms. So this refers to the social pressure an individual will feel to perform given behaviour or to not perform the given behaviour. So in my case, it was a question of am I expected to buy the palette just because that's what's in or can I just make do without? The next step would be perceived behaviour control. So this refers to the difficulty of performing said behaviour. So for example, in my case, it would be a case of, is my purchase unnecessary? What would I have to sacrifice to get this? Can I make do? Or do I need it? Now all of these three steps lead to intention. So my intention, it basically refers to how much do I want to perform this behaviour? And in my case, I, I did want to buy the palette. So the intention in turn then influences the behaviour which is just straight up performing the action whether or not you do or you don't. And in my case I decided that I was going to purchase the palette. The second purchase I'll be referring to is the ham sandwich I bought from Asda last week which is a routine problem solving purchase as I purchase it frequently and it's cheap and low risk. And the theory I will be applying to this purchase is the consumer decision making process which consists of six steps. The first step being problem recognition, recognising the problem. The second one being information searching, so you search around, you gather information, which leads to the third step of information evaluation, you evaluate alternatives, and then the fourth step will be purchase decision, so whether or not you're going to buy the item that you're thinking about. This leads to the fifth step of post-purchase evaluation, so whether or not you are happy with your item, and then that leads to the sixth step of feedback prior to next decision. So, for example, you could leave a review on social media or a complaint. So in my case, for the first step, problem recognition, I recognised that I was hungry, but I was on my way out the door and I didn't really have time to cook. So this leads to the second step, the information search. So I got up on my phone and I searched the nearest available supermarket and decided that I was going to drive there to get a quick fix for food. The third step, well, happened whilst I was in the aisle at Asda and it was between a ham sandwich or a cheese sandwich. So I decided the purchase decision, the fourth step, the purchase decision was the ham sandwich as I can't eat cheese so I was left with no other option. Now my first purchase evaluation, step five, was positive. I like the sandwich, um, it satisfied my hunger, I didn't really have any complaints about it, which leads to my sixth step feedback prior to the next decision. Um, I decided to not leave a review because it was a sandwich, however, if anything had been wrong with it, I would have made a complaint. 
that concludes my vlog of my customer behaviour, so thank you for watching and I hope you liked it.